Welcome back to the channel. Uh, first of all, I need to apologize. Uh, it's been about four, five, four or five weeks since we posted the video last. Uh, the reason why is because the shop is absolutely taking off. We're talking like full throttle, NASA space shuttle, ground control to Major Tom, insanely busy. I haven't even started advertising yet and just through word of mouth, I got cars lined up on the schedule. I got cars sitting outside. I, what I've done so far is brake lines on a Ranger, a flex plate on an F-150. Um, if you know what that entails, it sucks. I did five services last weekend. And then what just left yesterday was a 2013 Outback that kind of threw me for a loop a little bit. Uh, we didn't think head gaskets because those engines don't really blow head gaskets, but it would randomly overheat. So we did thermostat, water pump, it passed a compression check, it passed all the checks. Come to find out, cylinder four was severely damaged. Uh, so we got a long block from a junkyard, threw that in, and it's it's on its way. But on the bright side, um, all that extra shop work is paid off the shop. So like the my Lowe's card that I used to build the shop, like the insulation and all the material, is now paid off. Tools are paid off. The vehicle's been paid off for a long time, but like the entire shop now is paid off. So that means... Up next, I'm gonna be buying a lift. So this weekend, I'm kind of waiting on parts for a few vehiculars, so I have some free time. So we are going to tackle something that I've been putting off for a very, very long time. This is my 2009. It's an Impreza, but it's an Outback Sport, and it's got a horrible, horrible oil leak coming from the oil pan because the dealership where I bought this car replaced the oil pan and did a fabulous job. I leak out a quart of oil probably every two weeks and my parking spot at work, let's just say it will never rust. And don't make fun of my door. It was an accident. Well, it wasn't even my fault. I got backed into, but you know, orange doors, more horse. I'm gonna start ripping into her. I mean, it's, it's, it's an EJ253. You've seen me do how many of these on the channel, but I am definitely going to show you the problem and why I hate dealerships. So I rolled underneath to start draining the coolant and I unhooked a few things while I was under there, but I grabbed my light just to give it a you know quick underneath inspection. And I try to make this channel fun. I try to make it enjoyable to watch, but in all seriousness right now, I don't know how whoever worked on this car, their conscience let them say this was okay. Like this car is okay to be driven on the road. And again, like I mentioned earlier, this was a dealership that did this. So I'm gonna continue getting this out because I cannot wait to show you guys this. Like this is just top notch, A plus quality work. That's sarcasm. Really? Yes, really. All right, continuing to pluck along. I got the radiator out and the exhaust manifold off and we'll, we'll check this out. Uh, that was all that was left. Like literally I drug the rest of my exhaust out from underneath the car uh, about five weeks ago. So I've been running literally open header for about the last month. And the more I dig into this thing, as I'm finding more high quality work. So like everything is zip tied uh, instead of put back where it's supposed to be. So like your air fuel sensor and your O2 sensor harnesses were just zip tied to the coolant line that comes, or the, the coolant hose that comes off the radiator. And another high class modification here, we have wing nuts on the, uh, the battery tie downs. The next day. Well, hello. Well, it's time. The engine is out. It is time for me to show you the quality of work coming out of dealerships nowadays. I'm gonna flip the engine over and we're gonna see how bad it actually is. All right, are you ready? All right, so I have no idea what brand of oil pan this is because I, I, it's gotta be some cheap Amazon whatever. Uh, normally, these are 17 millimeters. This is a 7 8 Let's get a closer look, shall we? Hmm. There is a bolt that's not supposed to be there stacked with about 80 washers. Uh, all the silicone, if you can see, around the outer edge of the pan. Uh, look, look, there's another bolt that's not supposed to be there with about 75 and a half washers on it. Uh, let's go up this side, the back side of the engine here. Uh, all the silicone, all the silicone. What, what is that right there? Another two bolts with about 105 washers stacked up on them. 
I wonder what the parts bill was for this because you know five gallons of silicone is pretty expensive that what scares me is if there is this much on the outside of the pan there's probably just as much on the inside of the pan so when I take this off I'm definitely gonna be checking the oil pickup tube to some of you this might not be that bad but I expect a little you know, higher quality of work coming out of a dealership. I think I've mentioned this before in this video. This came out of a dealer. Did I mention this was a dealer ship that did this work? Really? This is why, and judging by the title of the video, I do not like dealerships because they charge you a metric crap ton and do this kind of quality of work. Being a mechanic and owning my own shop, this bothers me because they charge the most and obviously can get away with the most jankiest work. Car manufacturers now are making cars to where you have to take them to the dealer to get worked on. There might be a few of you that are watching this and think the same thing, as in you would like to keep working on your own cars, working on your family's cars, but some aspects, some things, you have to take it to a dealer to get fixed. And I will be honest with you guys, I did work in a Toyota Subaru dealer for about a year, and it was basically the same thing. It was get the car in and just get it out because we, are, we have a schedule, we have people waiting, they don't care about quality of work anymore, it's mostly just quantity. It's quantity of cars over quality of work. And something else, the technicians there thought everybody who drove a WRX or an STI was a complete douchebag. So I got the oil pan off and I don't know what kind of silicone they use, but it's like none of it actually stuck to the oil pan. It just gooshed out the sides. And yes, the inside is just as bad as the outside uh, as far as excessive amounts of RTV hanging off the side of the block. Yeah, as you can see, there's a quite a bit of uh, extra hanging on there. Ooh, there's a good one right there, if you can see that. There's a good one. Oh, look at that, look at that. Hmm, that's about a gallon and a half right there. And if you look at the oil pan, none of it stuck to the oil pan. So I don't even know if it was actually, well, it wasn't sealing anything because I was blowing it out as, just as fast as I could pour it in. Walk back over here, I'll show you the bolts. Here's one, you can see that. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, many of washers. I'm not gonna count them all because there's so many. Here's another one, just stacked. So I'm going to get a razor blade and start scraping the 79 gallons of gray RTV off the uh, block. All the old silicone down there, if you can see it. I think I uh, found something that has more silicone than uh, Kim Kardashian then Courtney Cox, then Iggy Azalea, then Dolly Parton, then Pamela Anderson, then Megan Fox, then Michael Jackson. So I'm gonna flip her back over once I put the dipstick tube back in and let it cure overnight. And then tomorrow we're going to replace the timing belt. Alrighty, so the timing belt is changed and engine is back where it's supposed to be. Um, I am really far behind tonight because I have never had a timing belt cover fight the way this one did. Um, usually, they're 10 millimeter bolts that hold the timing belt cover on. Usually, I have one or two that are rusted, rounded off, whatever. Um, this one, I had two that were good that I could actually fit a 10 millimeter socket on. The rest were completely rusted, rounded off. One was so bad that I could, I had to hammer a seven millimeter, seven millimeter socket on and zing it off with the impact. I won, everything has changed, engine's back in, so I'm not gonna be able to start it tonight because I need coolant, but we're gonna keep plucking away. Here are three of the timing belt cover bolts. They all look like this. They all fought and fought to come off. The bottom one there is the one I had to uh, hammer the seven millimeter socket on. Yeah, that was a battle, but uh, I uh, I was victorious. Got them all out and got the timing belt changed. All right, all back together. Got cooling in it, got oil in it. We're gonna fire up and see, hopefully it's, I got the timing belt on right. Prepare for open hitter. I really like to say something, but you probably can't hear me anyway. 
Okay, got her up to temp, got all the air bubbles worked out. Uh, gonna take her for a quick spin around the block and then come back and clean up the shop because I have another customer car outside waiting. Um, hopefully we don't have any issues because this these certain years of Impreza or Outback Sport do not have temp gauges. So if it overheats, I don't really know until it's too late. Okay, just got back from our test drive. Everything is good. Coolant is bled, no air bubbles. Got hot heat, power steering is bled, uh, no leaks. Well, I got a, I got a minor, very minor coolant seep from the thermostat housing where it mates to the water pump. It's not actually dripping, it's just a little bit of wetness where it mates together. So I'll take care of that later. I'm not draining the coolant tonight. With that said, I think we're gonna end the video off here. I think you all understand now why I learned to work on my own stuff and I continue to work on my own stuff and I work on other people's stuff because you can't trust anybody anymore. So with that said, please like and subscribe. We got lots of videos coming up through the winter. Please like and subscribe and I think we'll see you next time. All right, give you a quick update. Uh, drove it to work today, running good, running fine. Got to the gatehouse to badge in and there was some steam rolling out from underneath the hood. So I got to my parking spot and popped the hood and come to find out one of the hard metal lines underneath the intake has a big rust hole in it and it is geysering coolant all over the top of the block. All right, to give you a visual and to show you how much fun this is gonna be, the line that has the rust hole in it is this one right here. It can be the easy one, you know, that's, you know, right here. It has to be the hard one and it's got a rust hole underneath the intake and it's just old faithful and coolant all over the top of the block. And it goes from the back here all the way underneath the intake uh, behind the timing belt and all the way down to the water pump. So this is what I get to do this week and I am so thrilled. Along with a water pump on a PT Cruiser. I hope you all have a nice weekend.